Hey everyone, it's Matt with EarningsElite.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, today we're uh, doing a new video for you, kind of an updated video on how to time your entries into SQQQ, uh, specifically on the hourly charts. And again, if you're enjoying, just briefly, uh, if you're enjoying some of the content we're providing, please do subscribe to the channel using the button there on the bottom right. Also head over to our uh, website, EarningsElite.com. You can pick up our free a monthly newsletter and plus alerts communication that we send out and we also just released the uh, September and October trading playbook which you can pick up so again it's earningselite.com up on the screen here we only have two time frames that we're going to deal with typically we like to trade on three or four different time frames uh, because of the nature of SQQQ uh, and given that it's a, a call on, on a bear market we are just going to use two uh, the price action um, just briefly is uh, really based on or designed to deteriorate in value. SQQQ uh, is designed to go down in price and value over time. And uh, so we, we, it's, I guess you call it more volatile, obviously, uh, than many of the other stocks, especially ETFs out there. So uh, we're just going to be using two time frames because it's a really, uh, it's a, it's a really a short term hold for many folks. Uh, and we're going to start first on the left hand side of the screen which is the 195 minute chart. It's actually uh, two bars per day. If you have software that will allow you to use two bars per day, I'd suggest using this because it's gonna give you the better signals um, than if you were just use a daily chart. I think it's a bit more sensitive and allows you to hop down to an hourly chart uh, a little easier. So again, this is a 195 minute chart or six, uh, two bars per day. And what we're doing is we're looking for low risk entries because our website, earningselite.com, is all about finding low risk entries because that's where you're uh, going to get the most um, value for, for, for your purchase at the time. SQQQ really uh, only turned into a bull market of its own when the stock market, uh, the NASDAQ, went bearish um, just at, towards the end of July. And so we wanted to take a look at when is the time to start picking up SQQQ shares along the way down. Um, just kind of uh, fast forwarding just a little bit. Right now at the present moment, um, it's turned obviously back into a bull market, a stock market bull market, uh, and therefore SQQ is in a bear market by itself. But if we hop over on the left-hand side of the chart, you're gonna see that we're, we're gonna be looking for, and using these particular settings, and uh, you can jot them down or, or refer back to the video. Uh, what we have here on the top chart um, is uh, is important if your software allows you to, to, um, to create this this ratio of SQQQ versus uh, VTI, which is this uh, total stock market, the Vanguard total stock market ETF, have that up there. Also the PPO setting, which uh, you can keep as a standard setting. We have here on the uh, on the two bar um, uh, chart per day, we have an, an EMA or an exponential moving average of 20. Uh, we have our volume down the bottom with the Bollinger Band overlaid with the normal settings, the two, uh, the, the two standard deviation setting. Uh, we've just deleted the middle and the bottom channels, so don't worry about that. Uh, but you want to have a Bollinger Band if you can overlay your volume. And on the bottom, we have an RSI of five with an overlay of the simple move of 21 simple moving average, and that's going to allow us to uh, add to the signals that give us um, the indication that we should start paying attention and start looking for low risk entries on the lower chart. So first, I want to hop over to uh, this is just late July. Looks like July 19th. What we had here. Um, was a pretty uh, good looking signal that would have indicated it's time to start paying attention. Um, but there really wasn't a complete signal and I'll show you why. Going first from uh, the top down, what we're gonna be looking for is SQQQ to start outperforming VTI. We wanna see that SQQQ is doing, uh, is seeing more uh, funds inflows than the Vanguard total stock market ETFs. And what that happens, what that means is when this particular uh, histogram um, or area chart starts to rise and uh, upwards, it means that money is flowing towards SQQ uh, more so than VTI or flowing away from VTI and uh, more so and, and going more towards SQQ. So we want to see this line start to rise. And let me just get out a marker here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, this little uh, bump up right here, you could have drawn a, you know, kind of a trend line and this would have been a signal. Okay, again, we're, look, we're, not, we're not talking about triggers here, we're talking about signals. This wasn't there for us yet. We want to see this PPO line crossing the center line. Um, so this would have been a, a non-signal. You did have uh, a, um, the volume bar on this gap up, push above the, uh, the Bollinger Band, which uh, tells us that 
this volume here was above two standard deviations, so it was above average uh, piercing of, uh, or, or above average volume for that particular bar, which again would have kind of uh, turned us to, you know, get, got us to look at what's happening. The other thing that did not work out is what we're looking for is we're looking for this simple moving average of 21 to be above the center line above 50. It was not there. The simple moving average, or excuse me, the RSI of 5 did pierce above, but it hadn't pulled up the RSI, uh, the, the uh, simple moving average 21 above the 50 line. So that didn't work out at that particular point. So um, it just would have been sort of watching and waiting for us at this point. What we're looking for is all of these um, uh, all of these things to line up as best as possible because we want to stack the probabilities in our favor before going ahead and looking at going long in SQQQ. So let me just fast forward a little bit here and what you're going to see is something has uh, shifted here. We've got, let me just pull up the marker again, uh, you did have, if, again if you can draw a line you just want to be paying attention, you did have an outperformance so this is a go, this is a signal that is turned on. Uh, at that particular point, which was about August 2nd, we didn't have a crossover just yet, but we did have it if you watched it progress. We did have a crossover eventually of the PPO line, or the center line rather, the, the, uh, the signal line hadn't caught up yet, but the PPO line uh, indicator did uh, cross over the, the center line. We had a gap up, which is also an additional signal, and we have uh, here a, uh, a pierce above the upper Bollinger Band which would have indicated another positive signal that it's time to start paying attention. And lastly, back here we did have a rise above the 50 line. It dipped down below it, but it did end up coming back above it probably around the same time as the PPO line was crossed over. So uh, on August 3rd, it would have been a time to start really paying attention and looking for an entry at that time. Now, when that happens, it's time to start moving down to the hourly chart because we want to be looking for uh, our entries on the hourly. Uh, and I'll kind of go through how to do that and, and why. So first of all, here we are on August uh, 2nd or 3rd, whatever that might have been. Let me just kind of see if I can uh, zoom in just a little bit on this chart. So August 2nd, August 3rd, we are looking. So here we are paying now attention to the hourly chart. You don't want to enter in here. Again, it's too high risk. Uh, I think it was Alexander Elder, if I recall, uh, really thought, really called this sort of the value zone. We have two uh, exponential, or excuse me, we have two moving averages set up on the hourly chart. We have an EMA of 20, and we have a simple moving average of 40. And inside uh, these two lines, once you've established a, a bull uh, market in a particular stock, in this particular case, a bull market in SQQQ, which is a bear market in NASDAQ, uh, we want to be looking for the value zone. We want to be looking for the price to come down into the value zone and the indicators to confirm what we're seeing. And that's why uh, the hourly chart is going to be important. So as we're watching uh, the price action fall down on the hourly chart into the value zone, we want to be looking for the signals that indicate to us that it's a lower risk entry into SQQQ. So on the, uh, uh, the two bar chart, we're still, as you can see, as we cruise along here, we're above on the PPO line. Everything looks good. We're outperforming. Uh, the volume is not incredibly impressive on the rise, which is you know something to be alert, uh, aware of. But that uh, um, the simple moving average of 21 is above the 50 the whole time. So what we want to do is we want to look for the uh, this and this is key. We want to look for the price to enter into the value zone, which is between the exponential moving average of 20 and the simple moving average of 40, which it had right there, and the RSI of five come down and get as close as possible, tag or just go beyond uh, the uh, about 25 or 30, I believe it is. I think it's uh, just 30 on our setting here. We want to see that come down, the RSI of 5, and tag that. And that indicates that it's a good time to go long. Because uh, again, we're still outperforming up here. If you look at this, um, yes, you have a, a kind of a single crossover, but then a recrossover of the uh, of the signal line here with the PPO. But the important thing is that the price has come into the value zone on the hourly chart. Now you can go long here. You could add into a position if uh, each time it comes down and does that, or you can exit when you feel it's a bit overbought. Uh, here when the RSI gets above, it's totally up to you how quickly you want to do this. Uh, but again, we have another signal that's come in. This one uh, wasn't as impressive, and I'll tell you why. It's because the RSI did not come down, so it would have been more of a watch and wait to see if it actually came down and tagged it. Um, it really wouldn't have been for us to add to the position there. Uh, and then also what we want to do is take a look at the next one, which was the, the price did come back down to the value zone. 
zone. It got uh, very close to uh, the RSI here, the R5, down to 30, again back into the value zone between your two moving averages. And again, you could have gone long, exit on your pop, uh, given sort of your, if you do your um, measured moves, you could have uh, exited here. And let me just uh, move this chart along just a little bit so we can kind of see what's transpiring um, now. And so on August 18th, we had the price come down back into the value zone. We got pretty overbought, but the concerning part about this particular move was it would have been a potential entry because we did have a tag down here of the RSI of five, but you can see it got very, very low. It, it pressed down quite far. And at this particular point, once we see it drop down below 20, it would have been worth it to hop back over to the two bar chart to see what's happening there. And so let me just fast forward the charts just a little bit to August 18th, which would have been right about here. And the RSI of five on this particular chart dropped down and hit the 30. Uh, it really would have signaled a, kind of a, you know, a dangerous entry at this particular point because the move down was so violent from an overbought position. Um, and so right now, I think what's, you know, Looking ahead into September and October, right now SQQ at the present uh, moment is in a uh, is in a bear market, which means the stock market or the Nasdaq is in a bull market. So what we're going to be looking for now going forward is hopping back over to the two bar chart. We want to be seeing this entire thing repeat again sometime in September and October for maybe a two to four week run that SQQ. Uh, we'll be playing again with these uh, these moving averages, the 20 and the 40, hopefully heading in the northeast really direction. So if you're going to be considering SQQQ, be on the lookout over the next several weeks and a couple months uh, because you might be finding uh, uh, finding a way to enter it using the system that I've just presented you. Again, starting with the two-bar chart, hopping down to the hourly chart. So again, thanks so much. Uh, do subscribe to the channel. Head over to our website, earningselite.com. Pick up that newsletter and the trading uh, playbook if you wish for September and October. And good luck and uh, happy trading.